Welcome to today's episode of Piper's Dojo TV, where we're going to talk about one super important pitfall that you can avoid whenever you play a grip that will revolutionize the way that you play it and clean up a lot of sloppiness. So let's get right into it. Here we go with Piper's Dojo TV. <laughs> Okay, in a very quick mini lesson today, I want to talk about what rolling crossing noises are and how they're really probably the number one killer of a clean grip when it comes to bagpiping. So a rolling crossing noise, there's actually three different types of crossing noises. Um, and this one is a crossing noise where our fingers either lift or drop sequentially rather than at the exact same time. Let me show you a classic one. Classic one would be from low G up to B. By the way, this uh, practice chanter is my very first practice chanter that I got on my seventh birthday, and I wasn't very interested in piping uh, at that point, but exactly a year later on my next birthday, I started to get really into it, and so this is actually a, um, an artifact from my past that has a lot of meaning to me, but uh, there you go, classic me getting off topic. The uh, classic example of a rolling crossing noise. From low G to B, if our fingers roll up sequentially, we get a sloppy note change, where what we really want is this. Where our two fingers lift at the exact same time so that we have a nice clean sound. That is a rolling crossing noise. Now. At the beginning and end of every grip that we play in bagpipe music, there's a low G there. And it's actually very common and very dangerous um, to have a rolling crossing noise going to and from low G because the pesky uh, pinky finger here, let's say we're coming from E down to low G, this pesky pinky finger can be late to drop down to the low G. So rather than getting a clean sound like this, Nice clean sound. If this pinky is lazy, for lack of a better term, we get that rolling crossing noise sound. Now, listen to the effect that that rolling crossing sound has on a typical grip. That probably sounds familiar to you because the world is filled with players who accidentally have this problem. So what you can do right now to possibly drastically improve your playing is to have a look at your grips and make sure that there are no rolling crossing noises to or from low G and uh, you know that'll have a huge impact on your playing. Lastly, if you're interested on totally revolutionizing your low G movements like grips, tear Lewis, and D throws, please check out our free resource that we've developed uh, our checklists for developing perfect low G movements because we're in the business of making you a better piper and we want to make sure that you have all the resources you can possibly have in order to get better. So if you enjoyed this video, check that out. But that'll do it now for another episode of Piper's Dojo TV. Thanks for tuning in.